Our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, starting at verse 21 and reading through to the end of the chapter. So Mark 5, verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who was there, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, <clears throat> immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that, that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you? <coughs> His disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. They all laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Paul. Uh, please keep that Bible reading open in front of you. Uh, there's a lot happening in that passage. Uh, we're not going to spend... a. Uh, uh, a lot on that passage, um, all the details, but we are going to focus on uh, one, one big theme. Um, allow me to pray before we uh, look at this passage. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks and praise again for your word. And Lord, we are so thankful that you have spoken. And Lord, you have given your word to us. So this morning, may our word shape us and make us more and more like Jesus. So we commit ourselves to you now and the work of your Holy Spirit, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The last few weeks, if you uh, have been, have or haven't been with us, we have been thinking about what it means to follow Jesus, isn't it? Follow the King. And when we follow the king, we said uh, one of the first things that we might start having is conflicts. Uh, people will be offended, and we will um, be offending people because gospel is offensive. And last week, if you were here, um, we looked at following Jesus means to listen to him. And that was from um, Mark chapter 4. 
this week from uh, Mark chapter five, we are going to think about this theme of faith. To follow Jesus means to have faith in Jesus. But what does it look like to have faith in Jesus? What does it look like to have faith in Jesus? Now, uh, scattered across chapters four, five, and six, we have a, a cluster of stories that talk about faith in Jesus. The reading we had this morning, we have the two stories of, of uh, uh, a lady who, uh, who had been healed by Jesus, and then Jairus, the synagogue ruler, who's rewarded for his faith as well. And if you zoom out of this passage and, and kind of started looking at what's, what's actually happening around or before and after this passage, you will, you will see in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, we have a story where Jesus actually calms a terrifying storm while his disciples were, uh, they were traveling across the lake. And in that passage, disciples of Jesus don't have faith. He rebukes them, doesn't he? Then in the first 20 verses of Mark chapter 5, we have the story of Jesus freeing a man who had been oppressed by many demons. And we see in that story, if you have time, read that later. But in this story, we see uh, his hometown people, the Gerasenes, they don't have faith in Jesus. They, instead of having faith in Jesus, they ask Jesus to leave. Please leave us. Then you go to the other side of the passage that we read, Mark chapter 6, the first six verses. We have a story where Jesus goes to his own hometown. And what happens? His own hometown people, they don't have faith in Jesus. They don't have faith in Jesus. So what we have is a sandwich, isn't it? It's a sandwich, a juicy sandwich. Two pieces of bread, and you have uh, the stories of the people who don't have faith on the other, either side. Lack of faith, lack of faith. And in the middle, we have the story of faith, isn't it? The story of faith. The, the, the meaty patty is faith. Now, if you, if you look at the passage that we read today, guess what? We have another sandwich. Now, I hope I'm not making you hungry by talking about sandwiches, right? Um, have a look at verses 21 to 24. It begins with Jairus, isn't it? Jairus comes to Jesus. He's asking Jesus to heal his dying daughter, 12-year-old daughter. Just come and touch her and heal her. But then in verses 35, 25 to 34, uh, the story is interrupted. To tell a story about this unnamed lady who had been bleeding for 12 years, and, and, and she's healed. Then once this is finished, we have Jairus' story continuing, where Jairus' daughter is raised from the dead. So it seems that the story of, of the healing of this bleeding woman has the answer to our big question. The big question where, what does it look like to have faith? What does faith in Jesus look like? Through this middle story, Jesus teaches the, the disciples, the Gerasenes, his own hometown people, and Jairus, and all of us, what should faith in Jesus look like? What should faith in Jesus look like? So let's dive in. Let's dive in. The very first thing we learn uh, is to have faith in Jesus means to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You see, as Jesus turns to, to go with, with Jairus, we are told that there was this large crowd pressing in and around Jesus. It was slow going. It's, it's, it was like, uh, probably like 
uh, the Boxing Day sales when you go to the city. I mean, you, you, it's slow going, isn't it? When you come out of uh, town hall station, you try to get into the crowd, the crowd pushes you where the crowd goes. Then there was this interruption, a delay. A nameless woman, about the time that Jairus' daughter was born, this lady had her period. And it never stopped. And she had been constantly bleeding ever since, and none of the doctors were able to help her, which means she was unclean, according to the Old Testament law. She was an outcast. The family, her, her community disowned her, uh, and, and she could have uh, not gone to the temple or the synagogue. And she was poor because she had spent all her money on all the doctors. And Mark says, when she heard about Jesus, she came up. She came up to him. In her, in her desperate need, in her helplessness and hopelessness, she comes to Jesus. She didn't want to be, be a spectator anymore. She's heard a lot about Jesus. She couldn't afford to be a spectator anymore. What does she do? She comes to Jesus. I guess this then is the first step of having faith in Jesus, isn't it? Stop being a spectator. Stop being an observer from distance. No, come to Jesus. With little or no faith with empty or full hands, whether, whether you are somebody or nobody, whether you are having a good season or a bad season, come to Jesus. I know a girl who, who got married to a, a childhood um, pen friend recently. Now, some of you might be wondering, who is a pen friend? Have you had pen friends? No? Huh? Some of you? I used to have one when we were growing up. Pen friends are uh, when we used to write letters by pen and paper, using pen and paper. And, and we used to write letters to people maybe in another city because there was no internet. Um, and then we, we had friendships. And this, this girl um, continued to write to this guy in the, in the United States. And, um, and they became good friends. And then she... Uh, started having romantic feelings for her, she decided, well, I need to get to know him a bit more. So she said, I'm going to move to the United States and, um, so that she could get to know him better. Because it's hard to get to know someone when you are far away, isn't it? Come closer to Jesus. If you haven't believed in Jesus, coming to Jesus may mean Start investigating him. Don't settle to what others say about him. Read the Bible. You might want to come to church regularly. You might want to meet up with a Christian friend. And if you are a Christian, coming to Jesus could be, or not could be, should be a daily thing, isn't it? Reading his word, prayer, and, and doing your devotions. Uh, for me, it is spending the first half an hour of my day doing my devotions, reading the Bible, praying. What does that look like for you, coming to Jesus daily? Is it existent or non-existent? Do you make it a point to come to Jesus every day? Or is it just a, a Sunday observance for you? Because to have faith in Jesus begins by coming to him coming closer to him. And the second thing that we see is, is this lady, she takes a bold step of faith, doesn't she, in Jesus. She heard, she came, and then she touched Jesus. She heard, she came, and she touched Jesus. Now, in a, on a normal day, touching Jesus would have been an okay thing. But for her, this was a bold move. So as we've seen, according to the Old Testament law, she was unclean. 
And anyone she touches would become unclean. And this lady shouldn't be here. She's not welcome. And she's not allowed to touch anyone. And if, if people had found out that she's there and that she has this condition, they would have chased her away or they might even stone her to death. You see, she had faith. But if you, if you think about it, her, her faith was not perfect, right? It was kind of superstitious faith, right? Because she thought to herself, if I, if I touch Jesus' clothes, I might get healed. She kind of had faith in Jesus' clothes. But in her desperate moment, although her faith wasn't perfect, she took this bold step, didn't she? And Mark says her imperfect faith was immediately rewarded by Jesus. The 12 years of of pain and shame and suffering were gone in this one touch of Jesus. See, the focus here is her, the boldness of her faith. The, the, the focus, the, the one single-mindedness of her faith. And because she didn't care what others might think or do or say, she didn't care even if her life was in danger. Uh, all she cared was somehow to touch Jesus' garments. To have faith in Jesus then is to act upon what we know of Jesus, isn't it? And to take that bold step towards Jesus. Not on fantasies that we think about Jesus, no the truth about who Jesus is. And if you are not a Christian yet, this may mean to take that bold step of faith in, in trusting in Jesus alone for the forgiveness of your sins and, and making him your only Lord. It may be to take that step of being baptized and, and telling everyone publicly that you have trusted in Jesus. You may not fully understand. Your faith may not be fully mature or, or perfect. It may be weak. And those steps could cost you. People may ridicule you, disown you. You may lose friendships. You may lose your job. Or in some cases, in some situations, you might even lose your life. But to have faith in Jesus is to take that bold step of faith, knowing he is the Lord, the only Lord of the whole universe. And if you are a Christian this morning, most of you are. That may mean to take, take a step of faith every day. Having Jesus, uh, uh, trusting in Jesus for every area of your life. Having faith that Jesus, Jesus knows your work situation, your family situation, your health complications, uh, that he knows your future, uh, trusting in his promises. It may mean to daily say no to worry and say yes to Jesus. To say no to fear and say yes to Jesus. To say no to temptations and say yes to Jesus. To say no to sin and say yes to to Jesus. Having faith in Jesus is to take those bold steps of faith, trusting in him fully. Come to Jesus, take the bold step of faith, and finally this story teaches us to have faith in Jesus means to have a relationship with Jesus. And if you, if you ask this woman, why did, you, why did you go to Jesus? And she might tell you, oh, well, I, all I want to do, all I want to get was my miracle. Right? I just wanted to get my miracle and just, just, just go away. I didn't want to make any, any scene. I didn't want to make a big scene out of it. I just wanted to slip away. Because after 12 years, all she wanted to do was probably go home to her family. 
to live a pain-free life, to hug her family, to go back to the synagogue, to, to even, might even to get married to someone, to do normal stuff that she couldn't do for 12 long years. But did you notice Jesus doesn't allow this lady just to slip away after, after getting her miracle. Oh, he could have, right? I mean, he could have just let her go. I mean, did, didn't Jesus really know who touched him? He knew. Why does he stop? Why does he ask, who touched me? To the annoyance of, of all the people who were present there. I mean, they're saying, are you serious, Jesus? I mean, all these people are pressing on you, and then you're asking, who touched me? And he kept looking. He kept looking. He kept looking until the woman comes out. And Mark says, when she came out, she told Jesus the whole truth. What happened, how it happened, what she did, why she did, and even she might have told how the doctors ripped her off. She told the whole story. Can you imagine the scene? And you have all these people uh, surrounded by Jesus, surrounding Jesus, and, 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 and this lady is on Jesus' feet, sitting and Jesus looking right into her eyes. And she tells the story. And, and Jesus is fully focused on her, listening to her. And she's having a, he's having a conversation with her, isn't he? And he, he calls her daughter. And he, he tells her, uh, and she, he even, even corrects her, right? I mean, he says, you know what? What healed you is not my garments. What healed you was your faith in me. My clothes doesn't have power. It's me who has power. And he doesn't let her go with, with just a miracle, right? He sends her away with his peace and freedom. You see, she, she came just to get the miracle and just, just go away without making a fuss. But, you know, Jesus is interested in having a relationship. He wants the miracle to point to a meeting. He wants the miracle to lead to a meeting, a relationship. And that is, my friends, is the bedrock of Christianity, isn't it? It's not obeying rules and regulations. It is about a relationship with Jesus. So often, people come to Jesus to get their miracle, right? They pray, have faith in Jesus, but once the, the prayer is answered or the miracle is given, uh, you don't see them until the next Miracle is needed. I can tell you dozens of stories like that, but I won't, I won't do that this morning. To have faith in Jesus is to have a relationship with him. To know him, to be known by him, to follow him, to serve him, because he loves to hear our disappointments, our, sorrow, our, our sorrows, our losses, struggles and fears, our desires, of aspirations. He loves to hear them. He has time to hear them. He loves when we take time to listen to him and do what he loves us to do, wants us to do. He loves when we take time to meditate on his word. He loves when we ask him to correct us and guide us and, and lead us. He wants to send us with his peace and, and freedom, love, and grace. So friends, having faith in Jesus means to come to Jesus, 
to take a bold step of faith in Jesus and to have a personal relationship with him. Now you might be thinking, where is Jairus in all this? While all this was happening, where is Jairus? He's just there, isn't he? He's just there. He, he probably he can't go anywhere. I mean, he has to go with Jesus. He's, he has to show Jesus the way. And he's probably getting impatient, like, oh, come on, Jesus, yalla, 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 yalla. Get, get going, come on, let's go, let's go. In fact, all this time, Jairus had a front row seat of the action, didn't he? And I believe this was a divine interruption. A divine delay for the sake of Jairus. Because Jairus had just begun his journey of faith, right? In verses 21 to 24. He had come to Jesus asking uh, Jesus to come and, and heal his daughter. Like the woman, he has, he has come to get his miracle. And Jesus perhaps purposely delays his going. He, he does that, right? He allows Jairus to see the miracle that happened, to see the power of Jesus. He allows Jairus to hear the story of the, this woman, the whole story. He's there listening to her. He allows Jairus to know what it means to have faith in Jesus. He does that to grow him in his faith, to shape his faith, to bulk up his faith. Because do you see what happens while Jesus was talking to this woman? The last few words that he was talking to this woman. The very first thing is he gets the news that he dreaded hearing, that your daughter is dead. And then those who brought the message, they don't have any faith that Jesus has power to do anything. He says, they say, well, please don't bother the teacher anymore because he can't do anything. Just let him do his teaching. He's just a teacher. And then as they walk home, he will hear all the professional mourners wailing and, and screaming and singing all the funeral hymns to make sure the whole city knows that there is a death in this family. And as he steps into the house, he will be confronted with the lifeless, cold body of his little daughter. You know, it is one thing to, to hear about bad news. It is an entirely other thing to see it in front of you. It is one thing to hear that your reports are bad. It is another thing to get the report in your hand and read it yourself. It is one thing to know that a disaster has hit your hometown, but it is another thing to go actually see it with your own eyes. And then he will have to hear people scoffing and mocking Jesus and laughing at Jesus because Jesus says this girl is not dead but just sleeping. And I guess knowing all this, Jesus graciously allows Jairus an interruption, a delay, to witness the faith of this unnamed woman. To provide Jairus a model of faith. So when Jesus asks Jairus, don't be afraid. Just believe. He can do that even in the face of death. And when he does that, when he has faith in Jesus, he gets to see this most awesome miracle, right? Jesus raising his daughter from the dead. We are all called to follow the king. I don't know what your circumstances are this morning. Um, perhaps there is a delay 
on interruption in your life? You might be wondering, what on earth is happening here? Why is all this happening? And my encouragement for you from this story is to don't get discouraged. Don't get disheartened or give up because they are most often seasons of growth. God growing and shaping our faith, bulking up our faith in Jesus. So keep coming to Jesus, whether you are a believer or not, keep coming to Jesus. Keep taking those bold steps every day. I mean, as believers, we need to take bold steps every day, isn't it? Bold steps of faith every day. Take those steps of faith in Jesus. Keep growing in your relationship with Jesus because, friends, this is what it looks like to have faith in Jesus. I'm going to give us a moment to just, just reflect on what we've just heard this morning. Maybe even bring up any, anything that, that, that you might be thinking through or, or a situation that is in your life that, that you might be thinking, there's an interruption there. What is God trying to teach me here? How is he growing my faith? What is he asking me to do? Is he asking me to come to him? Is he asking me to take this next step of faith? Or is he calling me to grow in my relationship with him? So let's do that for for a moment, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you taught us through your word. Thank you for revealing us things that we may have just skimmed through or skipped. Thank you for even confronting us with your word, showing us areas that that we may have fallen behind. Thank you for convicting us of our sin. And this morning we pray. Grow us in our faith in you. Help us to come to Jesus daily. Help us to know what that looks like. Help us to know what we need to give up in order to come to you daily. And this morning... Lord, you know the situations that we are going through. And Lord, help us to know when and how to take those steps of faith. Lord, to look up to you from all our circumstances. Help us not to be defined or help us not to define our circumstances by what we are seeing. but Help us to bring you into the picture. And help us to grow in our relationship with with Jesus. And as we do, may we see you reviving our souls and, and bringing us into this intimate, eternal relationship with you that can never be taken away from us. So we thank you and we give you praise now. In Jesus' name, amen.